Hello, everyone. I recently had the distinct pleasure of attending the Mexicarte Museum in downtown Austin, which focuses on Latino art and culture. The exhibits are constantly rotating and include this abstract piece by Yaris Gonzalez, depicting issues at the border, as well as a number of other contemporary installations you see here. But I thought that in commemoration of the Day of the Dead this year, I'd focus on the Dia de los Muertos exhibition, which includes a number of paintings and various depictions, primarily of the traditional Calavera Catrina skeleton in in various contexts. The museum has been exhibiting these displays commemorating Dia de los Muertos annually since 1984, so 2020 is actually the 37th straight year. But the real draw of this exhibition is the ofrendas, which are basically altars that feature physical offerings to the dead spirits that comfort them in the afterlife. And this museum exhibits a series of ofrendas from various artists and organizations, including this one honoring the famous Guatemalan Mexican artist Rina Lasso, who was inspired by Mayan frescoes in life and also enjoyed collaborations with fellow artists Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. And this next altar from Wendy Guerrero is called Altar para Nuestras Curanderas, for our ancestral healers, and it's intended to honor the practices of curanderismo, or sort of traditional native homeopathic medicine. The shape and structure of this ofrenda is rather different, but it features household items common in practicing households, as well as Catholic imagery, which of course is always lurking just beneath the surface of many otherwise pagan Latin traditions. This ofrenda from Melissa Lopez is entitled Luz de Madre. It recalls several family members, including her mother, and it displays several of their worldly possessions, as well as a three-foot Virgen de Guadalupe sculpture from the family altar, but it also pays respect to deceased cartoon characters, including, interestingly, Edna Crabapple from The Simpsons. And then this altar, courtesy of the Consulate General of Mexico in Austin, is named rather simply Altar de Muertos, and it is dedicated to six prominent Mexicans who passed away in 2020. And given the sheer magnitude of deaths caused by COVID-19 this year, it is no surprise that there is an ofrenda devoted entirely to victims of the pandemic. It comes to us from Maria Eugenia Ramirez Flores, accompanied with a poem that ends, Vivan, vivan los que dejan en su vida ejemplo y fuerza que los que velan por ellos seguros tendrán su recompensa. Not all altars are exclusively Mexican. This one from Catarina Tzassis commemorates civil rights icons John Lewis, Rosa Parks, and Martin Luther King. It encourages the expression of our civic voice at the polls, and it combats the misconception that your vote doesn't matter. And aside from COVID, a longer term epidemic that has taken many lives is, of course, that of HIV AIDS. And this ofrenda ensures that the victims of that disease are not forgotten, despite the medical advances that have significantly prolonged or essentially normalized the lives of those infected with HIV. Many of those victims are represented here in one way or another, with an AIDS quilt providing a fitting backdrop. And here we have yet another uniquely themed altar, this one from the Austin Classical Guitar Team, honoring local guitarists who have passed away over the years. And aside from the guitars and the guitar playing skeleton at the top of the altar, this is a rather traditional ofrenda in that it is comprised of personal items associated with the deceased. I really love this one from Eric Castilleja called Andale Siéntate Con Nosotros, which he devotes to his abuelos, his grandparents, and it's called 
siéntate con nosotros because his grandparents spent the majority of their twilight years seated on their front porch visiting with family and friends and these are the actual physical chairs they occupied all those years it's just such a personal and really cheerful but touching remembrance this ofrenda is from artist Angel Ortega and it features the Fideo Paleta Man character found in many of his works Um, it pays tribute to a specific paletero from Austin named Adeliado Urias, and the guitar acknowledges his Tio Lolo, who passed recently from COVID-19. This altar here is a bit different in structure, its centerpiece obviously being an open coffin covered in flowers, and this comes courtesy of an end-of-life services company called Palehurst. And The ofrenda is entitled Una Vida Unida in uh, recognition of the way in which Latin culture emphasizes strength through the support of family and the way that celebrations like Dia de los Muertos supports that ethos. And last but not least, this ofrenda is more traditional and personal as it is dedicated to a single person, an artist named Francisco Toledo who died in 2019 and specialized in representations of pre-Hispanic culture. The sawdust alfombra carpet is the sort that you'd see in streets and near churches and cemeteries where, while the kites are intended to symbolically help usher souls to the altar. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed this tour of the Mexican Arte Museum in Austin. Happy socially distanced Halloween and Feliz Dia de los Muertos. Hasta luego, amigos. March W13 out.